Hey everybody, JJ here. We got a great pair of speakers today. They're out of Pace Morby Sub 2 community. These two young gentlemen are two of the original accountability leaders for Sub 2's Southern California chapter. They are part of the original OG of Sub 2. Uh, they've helped so many people. I can't even tell you. I'm sure they can't even count. I'd like to introduce my two very good friends, Mr. Mitch Roy and Mr. Richard Knowles. Mitch, how you doing? Afternoon, my good friend. How are you? Thank, you, phenomenal. For, thank you for this opportunity. You're thank welcome. You. Richard, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Doing phenomenal. Just like you guys, man. You guys look so handsome, man. I feel jealous. I'm jealous of you guys right now. Yeah, well, <laughs> you guys are both married. I'm not, so I'm envious of both you guys. But uh, <laughs> anyhow, um, really quick, I want to talk about how, how you guys got started. I mean, we're, we met through Sub2. We're real estate investors. Everybody gets started at a different time in a different place. Uh, Mitch, let me just start with you. Has real estate always been on your landscape? Uh, was it something you were exposed to as a teenager through high school, college? Uh, if not, what were you doing before real estate and what was your introduction into real estate? Great, great question. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity and, and thank you everybody here. I see some old friends. Here. Thank you all for your time. We appreciate it and looking forward to delivering a lot of value. I've been a, a full-time real estate investor for 23 years, um, background in single and multifamily development, ground construction, fix and flips, uh, cash flow rentals, and uh, the mentorship. Uh, the sub two mentorship um, started uh, when it first started, April uh, 2000, so over four years. And we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, before that, I spent 15 years in corporate America. I was what's called a management consultant. I had my own company, basically a blue pinstripe suit, and I flew around and worked with Fortune 500 companies, the CEOs and senior executives to re engineer their, their companies. Uh, I used to fly 150, 200,000 miles a year, and that got old after a while when you get on an airplane and the pilot says, Mitch, I haven't seen you in a day. Uh, so that was fun. Um, so <laughs> around about 2000, I, I met a friend who was doing real estate, and I said, real estate? What's that? And she said, oh, I flip houses. I had no idea what it was. Learned from her, long story short, joined some mentorships and started doing it on my own and then found out about Pace Morby. And up until four and a half years ago, I had no idea what creative finance was. I thought you go to a bank, you get a loan, you call mom and dad, blah, blah, blah. Well, let me ask you, how did you come across Pace? We have, when I started with a thousand people, probably less when you got in, there's 15,000 now. How did you come across Pace Morby? Jeez, I don't even remember. It was so long ago. And I, I, I do remember I drove to his office. He had an office about the size of a bedroom. Uh, and Anna Martinez was there and, uh, couple other people he wasn't there and i said who's this guy pace i saw him on some kind of a podcast and they said he does creative finance and i said okay what's that and they told me and i said all right i'll sign up and then i met him uh you know a couple weeks later and this was the days where you know it was just pace and four videos and you can go over his house and hang out with him and you know it was a whole different time back then uh and so uh, they, they started the, the group and they started what's called accountability groups, different regions. And being in Southern California, they asked me to be in. And that's how I met Rich. He was one of the original members also. And that's how we met each other. We met each other and said, hey, let's let's start this group called SoCal Accountability Group. And, we just and there it is. It. It's yeah. one of the biggest groups in the country. So I mean, we Richard, some plans are going to be rolling out in a couple of weeks, which is going to be really, really cool stuff. Sounds exciting. Hey, let's let's move to uh, our very good, charming, good-looking, charming friend here. Um, so, Richard, real estate investment. Uh, again, same question that I gave Mitch, I give to you. Was this something you were exposed to early on? Was it around for you in high school and college? If not, what were you doing in the early years, and what did you do before you became a real estate investor? Yeah, great question. First of all, thank you for letting us be here. I really appreciate you, Jay. You're the best person I've ever met. You know, one of my favorite neighbors. You live right down the street from me. So um, I appreciate you, JJ. Um, so as far as my real estate experience, when I got exposed to real estate, uh, it was not until 2018, which was maybe about um, six years after I graduated from college. Um, so I went to college to get my computer engineering degree. Um, so I've been working in corporate America um, as a software engineer. 
And I love working with software engineer, you know, something very passionate about technology and building applications and things like that. Um, and I would do some freelance work outside of my W2 job. And I was just getting burnt out. You know, I was just working so hard, building active income, making great money, but still getting burnt out. And I came across a video on YouTube from Max Maxwell. Some of you might know Max Maxwell. Um, he's one of the OGs of wholesaling. And um, he was talking about wholesaling and also building passive income through rental portfolios mm -hmm. and things like that. So I became very interested. I was very intrigued by that. Like, wow, I can still make money without actually working, you know, make money passively. So um, in 2018, I started investing in real estate. I started being a private money lender. Um, the way I kind of operate is I, I like your quote, JJ, it's not always who you know, but who knows you, right? Um, so what I've been doing is I've been networking with people and I try to find someone who's experienced in what I'm interested in or what I'm looking to do. So um, I was interested in fixing flipping in the beginning, but I didn't know how to fix and flip. So I went to some meetups and I found some people and they said, hey, you can partner with some deals. You know, I could be a lender and they can teach me how to fix and flip. So that's how I got started, just by lending money to fix and flippers. They were teaching me how to fix and flip. And um, I realized that that's not what I'm going to do. It gets very stressful. You know, you're tearing down walls, yeah. you go over budget, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? So um, I shifted over to Airbnb and how to get to Airbnb, same thing. I went on Airbnb, I researched, or I searched for all the hosts in the area where I'm at in LA. And um, I just messaged every single one and said, hey, uh, I'm a software engineer. Um, can I bring value to you in any way? I see you have 10 listings, 20 listings. Um, can I help you scale, right? And I got a bunch of no's, but all I needed was one yes, right? So I got one yes, I met with her in person and um, we hit it off pretty quickly. And um, she mentored me, showed me how to scale real estate through Airbnb. Uh, we went from, I think, about seven listings to about 20 to 30 listings, right, um, within a short period of time. Wow. Yeah, so it's all through Lava Charge. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing. So um, let me ask you, Rich, how did you meet Pace? How did you come across Sub2? Or when's the first time you met Pace? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you can see the pattern that I mentioned, right? You know, I kind of try to find someone who's experienced in what I want to do. Um, so how did I come across Pace? I um, I was actually just watching uh, YouTube and I came across Wholesale Hotline with Brent Daniels, Jamil, and Pace. And my first time watching Wholesale Hotline and I saw Pace and he was describing, you know, a deal that he did. Um, so he was so articulate and how he was explaining creative finance. And I had no idea what creative finance was, but in that one case study that he talked about, I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is something that I can do, you know? So I, I started watching more Pace movie videos and I realized how good of an educator he is. He's a really good teacher. He's a good storyteller. Um, he paints the picture very well. Um, so I started following him. And then I think about two weeks later, he announced a sub two mentorship and um, I was a little bit hesitant in the beginning because I just found out about this guy, right? I, I've only known him for two weeks. And, um, you know, I found out it was a lifetime mentorship. Um, so I was like, hey, lifetime, I'm, I'm in. And uh, honestly, it changed my life. Um, you know, I would say, I joke around, but I say like one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life, you know, other than getting married and going to college. You know, this is one of the best decisions uh, in my life. So it changed my life, man. Yeah, happy to be there here. You go. There you go. You guys are the co- uh, admins, co-accountability leaders of the SoCal, the original accountability leaders of SoCal Creative Finance. How did you guys meet? I, I'll try to make it very quick. Um, yeah, so this is back in 2020 when you first joined uh, Sub2. Um, I think about December-ish. And um, I, I had an appointment in San Diego. So I live in LA and Mitch lives near San Diego. Um, and I had a, a, point, a solid appointment in San Diego. It was a big, um, I think, two or three acre property. And um, it was a huge development opportunity. And I had no experience in development. And Mitch, you know, has a lot of experience in development. So I said, like, hey, Mitch, you know, um, would you mind coming on this appointment with me? You know, and he said, yeah, sure, no problem. And he had no idea what's going on with his lead. You know, I gave him a brief overview of what it is. And so I start driving down to uh, San Diego and I'm practicing what I'm going to say. It's, I'm still very new in the space at the time. Uh, I'm practicing what I'm going to say, you know, I'm learning development, I'm watching YouTube. 
development videos, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and then I get to the appointment, and then Mitch and I greet each other, and then we see the seller. I say, hey, Mr. Seller, how you doing? But then I haven't said one word since then, right? Mitch literally took over the appointment for me. Um, they just hit it off. They had a really uh, good bromance thing going on, and um, <laughs> the seller just loved Mitch so much, you know what I'm saying? And he invited him to a party, all these different kind of things. And I was blown away. I'm like, you guys know I'm standing right here, right? You know? <laughs> Um, so uh, he, he blew that appointment out of the water. So I said, hey, Mitch, you know, let's, let's work together. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's very strong at rapport building, um, and I'm very good at technology. So uh, it was a perfect fit, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, Mitch is um, amazing. Both of you guys are amazing. I, I, I know you've helped so many people, and, and that's the key to a lot of what the Rockstars and Step 2 uh, provide is – that kind of deal. Um, I wanted to chat a little bit about um, your topic, and your topic is underwriting creative deals. Is that right, Mitch? Exactly right. So, you know, we have students on the call that are brand new, obviously people that are experienced. People will be watching on YouTube weeks and months down the line, as well as people that are, you know, as I said, new and, and experienced. For people that don't know what the term means, when it comes to real estate, what is underwriting? What does that mean? Great question. Great question. Uh, if I had to put that simply, it's how do we get the seller what they want in a way that is a win to us? So underwriting is another word for structuring the deal. So uh, if you're talking a cash deal, it's pretty simple. But let's say we're doing something creative that involves many, many, many different iterations of how you put that together. The concept that we talk about is underwriting, which is uh, it's not just structuring the deal, but it's running the numbers and the financials, looking at the exit strategy, making sure that the deal is a win for everyone involved and it makes money. So that in, in a nutshell is what underwriting and deal structuring is. You know, um, I heard an, another phrase before, I think it, it readily relates to this is and for people that are relatively new is underwriting you know figuring out the numbers is analyzing the deal you know we we see what the property sells for maybe what the the seller wants to get and maybe what the property can sell for later and we need to see i guess one of the phrases i always is there enough meat on the bone that after we go through all the different levels you know everyone needs to be happy and it, it, is that what does it take to do that, Rich? Richard? Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. It's uh, it's trying to create a win-win for everybody, right? So it's all about looking at your numbers and um, engineering the deal in a way that it's a good fit for the seller and the buyers, right? Um, so that involves doing comping. Uh, what is the property worth? Um, what is the value? What is the potential of the property after fixing, flipping it, rehabbing it? Um, can we rent it out to a long-term rental tenant? Um, can we do mid-term rentals? Can we do short-term rentals, Airbnb? Can we do assisted living? Um, so kind of looking at all the possibilities of what can be done with this property and engineer in a way that it's a win for the seller and solve their problem, which which, which uh, Mitch will talk more about. We're problem solvers. We're not um, just about the transaction. You know, We want to focus on what the seller really, really need. And if you accomplish that, then it's a win for everybody. You know, Pace turned me on to a phrase that I didn't really hear before was, what's your exit strategy? And as you say, you know, multifamily, uh, sober living, uh, there's a variety of uses for a property. And a property may not be suitable for one use, but it may be suitable for another use. And that's where creative underwriting comes into play, because you need to see what your different options are. And that's where some of your experience comes in. Because you guys are aware of all the different options, all the different paths to get there, all the different ways to look at something. As you guys underwrite deals, uh, are there different softwares you use? Are there apps on your phone to look at the value of a property, maybe beforehand or afterhand? Or what are some of the tools you guys use to underwrite? Yeah, yeah we um, we use PV for comping. PV is very good for comping. Um, so that's a very great tool. We should do prop stream, but PV has kind of become the new new software we use comping. Um, of course, we use Google Sheets, Excel to kind of create calculators and analyzers and things like that. Um, we used to use um, AirDNA to underwrite. 
um, Airbnb uh, type strategies, um, furnished finder for looking for kind of rates for midterm rentals, what a travel nurse might rent that property for, um, things like that. Um, and of course, for pulling lists, you know, we use PropStream, we use MLS data, mm-hmm. APIs, um, things like that. Um, I use county records research for pulling pre closures and auction data. Um, I believe that getting the best data will come from the courthouse directly. Um, so PropStream is a little bit outdated, um, you know, when it comes to getting fresh data. I mean, PropStream has, um, you know, some great tools. There's some pros and cons of PropStream. Right now, I'm not bashing PropStream. I love PropStream. It's a matter of what you use it for, right? Um, so I recommend if you're pulling data, pull it directly from the county if, if you can. Well, I want to let you guys kind of run for a second. Uh, jump into the topic. I, I don't know the landscape as well as you do, so which way you guys want to go? And I want everyone on this call, I, I don't know most of you, but I think this is really, really important because I would say the vast majority of investors look at how much money is in the deal, how much money am I going to make, and even what is my exit strategy. We do not look at that at all. And in fact, um, I don't consider myself a real estate investor, honestly. I I consider myself a problem solver. And and I mean that in in all seriousness, because when we're talking with a a seller, uh, invariably, uh, they will have some type of a problem that cannot be uh, solved. We like those deals. You know, if it's an easy deal, we'll tell them, hey, hey, JJ, this is a simple deal. Call a realtor, list it as a FISBO, sell it yourself. We like the ones that no one else can figure out. So ultimately, we start from the perspective and the mindset of we are a problem solver. We are looking to uh, solve problems. So typically, when we speak with a seller on the first or the second call, it's about 80% of them doing the talking. We're asking questions. We are first building rapport trust and credibility on that first call. But as important, we are collecting information about property, the situation, the mortgage, what they're looking to do, how, when, where, and why. We're taking you know very detailed notes. And then uh, we, we thank them for their time. We go back to the workshop and then with the elves, we'll come up with our underwriting and we will come up with anywhere from one to three different solutions that puts a smile on their face and our face. It's a win-win. And we will come back to them and say, hey, JJ, we listened to what you wanted to say, uh, what you wanted to do. You said your problem is X, Y, and Z, and here's what you want to accomplish. Here's three different ways to do this in a win-win. And it's very transparent what we're doing. There are times where we say, you know what, Uh, JJ, we really can't add a lot of value. I just had that call yesterday with a family seller. I'm not the right guy for you. Call a realtor, list it as a for sale by owner. You have my name and number, happy to answer any questions. So really, that's what it's about. We're building relationships, not just because it's the right thing to do, because a lot of these people will introduce us to others. Um, it's a very big world, but it's a very small community. And uh, your your reputation is really everything in this business. And so, so the old saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. So we always look. And, you know, we've seen this from you. You're one of the the people that exemplifies this, lead with value. Look at what you can do for someone. So that's how we start. We look at what are the options. You know, we'll look at their property address. We'll collect their mortgage information, which is the balance, the rate, the term, the type of the loan. Um, is it an FHA? Is it assumable, non-assumable? Uh, are they current? Are they in foreclosure? What's the property condition? Is it a cash flow deal? Uh, what's the seller looking for? You know, when we started, we had all of our notes. We would do this. Now it's just we've done it so many times. We just have a just a real chill conversation about that. And what are they looking to do? Are you looking to cash out? Do you need the money? Do you need to live on it? Do you want to get an income stream over a number of years? And that's what we're looking to do. And then we will come back and put together a, a team and a partnership to solve that problem. And that's pretty much how we do it. Man, I just love how you put it all out there for me it's like a painting right because i want to kind of look at all the different things and 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 i'm an analytical guy so i want to kind of see how they relate see what connects what doesn't connect again know what the options are like the options of of the different ways we can go the different ways of funding and what what the client wants um i want to ask you guys what are some of the biggest hurdles that you find? Is it? I know one of them might be that the seller wants more more money than it's worth. But uh, what are some of the biggest challenges that that one faces as a real estate investor or a creative real estate investor? 
Yeah, they took that one. Um, yeah, I would say the biggest challenge is working with agents um, who are not educated on creative finance. Um, a lot of them say it's not too illegal. Um, you can't do that. You know, what about doing sale calls? Um, with all these objections that we get. Um, but at this point, we're used to it by now. Um, we've seen so many objections um, that we have. Uh, literally, we have a document of frequently asked questions, right? Uh, we just share that with the seller or the agent. Um, is sub two illegal? Uh, why is not illegal? Um, the line in this HUD statement showing that sub two not legal, uh, not illegal. Um, do you want to sell calls? What we do if it happens to get called? Um, what are some precautions that we take? All that kind of stuff. So we have a brochure documentation, uh, to kind of rebuttal those objections that we get. So I would say that's the biggest challenge that we get is having to convert an agent. Sellers are a little bit more easier to work with, but agents, uh, because they are, they haven't been educated on creative finance. They're used to cash or traditional route. Well, you know, I, I, I'm seeing this maybe in the last year, how really creative uh, creative finance is. And, and in a sense, we're artists in a sense. Uh, and, and I thank Pace Morby for this because prior to meeting him, I, I had never heard of this. But if you really think about it, and, and Rich and I are both students of all the different concepts uh, and uh, pieces of creative finance, I look at creative finance like the alphabet. You're learning A, B, C, D, and E. But in and of itself, a letter means nothing. It is, it's in the hands of someone skilled in putting those letters together that allows us to create stories. So in terms of real estate, we can talk with a guy named JJ Azizian and listen to what his problem is and then draw from our alphabet of creative solutions to craft a solution. So a lot of the solution, most of the solutions are very different from one another. It's like a fingerprint. It's really customized to what you're looking to do, how, when, where, and why. And, and that's the beauty of it. And, you know, I've been doing it four years. I've been an investor for 23 years. And I mean this in all seriousness. I still consider myself a newbie because I'm learning something every single day. And usually whatever I was doing a year ago, the market's changed. So we're not doing that anymore. And we're doing something new. And you always got to be on top. This is a very competitive business. Uh, you've got some very smart, hungry, aggressive people. And so you always got to stay on top of your game and deliver value. I always treat people like if this is my mother, how would I be treating her? When I joined Step 2, there were about a little over 1,000 people, 1,200 people. Today, there's 15,000. There's a lot of people. Um, there's newer investors that are getting into this, and they don't always understand all the nuances and all the details. What's the best way for them to move forward? And I, I'm going to lead in with a, with a, a possibility you know, should they try and do it themselves and keep all the money to themselves? I think Pace talks about, you know, keep all of the grape or is it better to split it and maybe bring in other people and work together? How does that go? And, and how is it for the new investor to build relationships? Who do they look to and how do they pick other people to work with? Uh, you know, we get these calls frequently as leaders. We probably do one to two new student calls every day. Uh, yesterday, a brand new student said, I'm brand new. What do I do? How do I start? Uh, and so I'll ask him or her, what is your level of experience? If you have very little experience, and I, and I tell this to myself and to Rich, um, identify what you're really good at. Uh, if you think about what are the components of what we're doing, it's lead generation, closing, and dispo. I guess you can add a fifth um, category of marketing. So really, there's five categories in this. Start to do all of those uh, and see what you are good at and what you really love. Other than Pace Morby, we could do more than two of those. And I'm even learning this myself. I tried to do everything and some things I'm not good at. Um, so what I'm doing is focusing on what I'm really good at and what I love doing. And the parts that I'm not good at, I will partner with people like Rich and Oscar because they compliment me. So that is one thing. But for a new student, I, I would say, you know, if you were a new student, JJ, I'd say um, identify where you can add value. Um, initially, that might be putting a post in the group saying, hey, new student here, who needs help? Maybe someone will give you a list of foreclosures and say, JJ, call these 20 sellers every day. I'll give you a script. I'll teach you what to do. Get them interested. Once you're interested, kick it up to a Rich or an Oscar, and we'll take it from there. And we will teach you every single step of the way so that you can then bring on your own people. So look to add value first. Partner with others. Uh, provide value. Learn and grow. Always be learning. 
And, and that's you know, how you know, we recommend new students to do that, to partner up with people. This is not a solo business. This is a team sport. You, you cannot, and you really should not do it. It's a very lonely business. And there's ups and downs. This is a tough business. Um, and you, know, you want to share your wins and your bruises with your partners. And that really, really helps. And it makes it much more fun. And, and it's a great, great experience. And plus friendships like guys like JJ Azizian. You know, every time I see we give you a big hug and we love you, man. We've known you for four years and you're just, the stuff you do in this community is amazing. So we wouldn't have done that without this. Yeah, no, th- thank you so much. And, and I say it all the time. Um, you know, the biggest value that we get is students out of these communities. Um, it's not the coaching. It's not the curriculum. It's not the videos. It's not the YouTube or the Zoom calls. But the biggest value that we take home as real estate investment students are the relationships. Yep. You know, and if you're not building relationships, whether you're on the call or watching on YouTube, if you're not building relationships with the people that are within the community, particularly the rock stars, you are wasting your time. This is not a business you could do by yourself. With that awesome. said, you know, we're not always going to mesh with everybody, guys, right? We're not going to like everybody. Everyone's not going to like us. I know that it's pr- probably beneficial for the brand new student to come in and, and, and learn from the mindset that Pace provides us. Versus people coming from the outside real estate world where it's a kill or be killed, survival of the fittest, stab the other guy in the back to go help, go forward. How hard is it to, as we're meeting new people, to decipher who you want to stay in touch with and who you don't? I mean, what what's, how do we do that? You know, we, we've been in this game for a while. And it's a little easier for us to pick who we want to work with. Are there any tips or suggestions to the newer investors on how they distinguish who they want to align themselves with. It's like dating. Um, and, and Rich and I have run into this. You meet the, the nicest people that are, are not really nice when you get to know them. So we go very, very slow. I will not give money to someone I didn't know. Rich knows I give him my bank account, wouldn't even think twice about it. Uh, if it's someone new, we're going to watch their actions and go slow with them. And you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll get a gut feel with people, but you don't want to trust that. Uh, it, or maybe you do, but you want to see their actions because uh, people who are quote unquote bad, they will reveal themselves at some point. They, they can't keep it down. And so don't be in a rush. Just go slow, learn and, and go with your gut. Talk to people. This is it's a very big community, but it's a very small community. Yeah. Uh, people yeah, know who's doing yeah. what and uh, people know who the good ones are and who to work with. And, and that's really you just want to go slow with that. And whenever you're in doubt, reach out to a leader or someone you know and say, hey, I want to work with this this person. What do you know about them? That's completely fine. Excellent and suggestion. Me. Excellent suggestion. Mike McKenna, you're on with Rich and Mitch. What's your question? Hey, thanks, JJ. Uh, yeah, hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate you sharing all your knowledge with us. And uh, this, is, uh, this is part of what JJ's group's all about. And we, I, I love that. And, uh, but uh, if for someone that's just – getting started and wants to learn how to do underwriting what uh what guidance can you give where to start how to get going um any kind of uh, spreadsheets or anything like that uh to get started with yeah absolutely there's some spreadsheets uh within a subject community that we kind of pass around a lot of resources around underwriting um that have been created by some go givers in the community um and they're very helpful when it comes to underwriting um, but as far as getting started, I would say kind of partner, collaborate with people who are good at underwriting and kind of ask them, hey, can I be a fly on the wall? Can I watch you underwrite some of the deals or leads that you're working on? Um, honestly, when I first started, I didn't know how to underwrite. I didn't, I, I didn't become a good underwriter until I actually started doing the underwriting myself, right? Um, I mean, I could learn how to underwrite, like how to, you know, structure a deal for a sub two or solid finance. Um, for a hybrid, for a wrap, or a rental, or Airbnb, I can learn all that stuff, you know, by watching YouTube videos or classes, courses. But you're really not going to learn unless you actually go through the calculations yourself. Um, so I would recommend maybe join a group of people who are doing underwriting live. Um, kind of be a fly on the wall and maybe practice with them as well. Um, are you in sub two, by the way, Mike? I'm not. I'm Gator. Okay, you get it. Okay, perfect. Um, well, 
Um, yeah, I mean, Mitch and I, you know, we can help you with underwriting as well. Um, if you have any leads that you're working on, uh, we're more than happy to work with you and underwrite it live. Um, so Mitch and I do a lot of um, consulting and GVs, uh, joint ventures, and um, we don't just do the work. We actually try to educate our JV partners and help them learn on how we do things. Um, we have them come on calls with us. Uh, we go on a live Zoom and underwrite the live together. So we can definitely help you if you if you want to. You know, um, great, great. I, I do want to mention something that, you know, Mike, you and I started with Fortune Builders and now I've moved into Sub 2. And a lot of the information that's provided to students in different educational platforms are exclusive to that community. And, you know, as you buy it, as you know, Mike, we bought into Fortune Builders at $30,000, you know, that the communities don't want you sharing exclusive material outside. So sometimes with, if Mitch and Richard refer to something that they're using, some of that may be exclusive to the sub two community and that will not be available, but there are other things that are available. And, and the, the big part of that is their knowledge and their friendship and getting to know people first and foremost. And I say it all the time, chasing the relationship, don't chase the deal. Mitch, Richard, Mike McKenna is a great guy. He was at Squad Up Summit in in Tampa. Got my tickets for next year already. There, you, you guys will see him next year if you're going to be there. Mike, did they answer your question? Okay, great. All right, thanks, guys. Mike, Got thank it. you so much. Perfect. John Carpenter, you are on with Mitch Roy and Richard Knowles. What's your question? Uh, first off, it's good to see you all again. Uh, we were on a Zoom call a while ago. Uh, been taking action. I did my first uh, door knock last week. How many acquisitions do y'all get from door knocking in the LA area? Because I'm in North County, San Diego. I'm just um, keeping track of my KPIs, and I'm really pushing forward on handling uh, working with pre foreclosures. Yeah, I think uh, door knocking is a very great tool uh, for marketing and getting leads. Um, a lot of people don't want to do the work, right? Of driving to the property, walking, knocking the door. People are fearful of, you know, knocking that door. So I think it's great that you're doing door knocking. Um, so that's amazing. Um, I personally, I don't think Mitch does either. We don't really do a lot of door knocking. Um, so I can't really answer on the KPIs. Um, but of course, the more doors you knock, the more leads you get, right? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I would recommend door knocking when either when they first get that NOD, notice of default, Right, um, or when it gets closer to the auction date, um, those are the most optimal times that you actually convert that lead. Uh, from our experience, whether it's cold calling, texting, door knocking, right, um, being one of the first ones to reach that seller, um, can be a huge advantage to you. And of course, if you're door knocking, you know, within two weeks before the auction date, um, that would put you in advantage as well, especially if they open the door, right. Um, so I would also reach out to Abdul. I don't know if you know Abdul Latif. Um, he's been crushing it with door knocking in Southern California. Um, so I can, if you send me a message on Facebook or if you find him on Facebook, um, shoot me a message. If you can't find him, let me know. I'm happy to connect you with him. Uh, but Abdul is one of the best when it comes to door knocking in Southern California. Jonathan, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. Hey, I'm going to try to find him out there. Thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure to meet you, myself, speaking for myself. And I've accepted your friend request, got you in the group, and we'll we'll just look forward to getting to, to know you myself. So thank you for joining us. Young man's name is Rob Howdy. Rob, how are you? You are oh, Mitch and Richard, Rob is here in Southern California. We've seen him on some of our Zooms. How are you, Rob? Hey Mitch, how's it going? Good, my friend. How are you? Good, good. Uh, you, you and I spoke uh, uh, a while back, a few months ago. Uh, and Richard, you you connected with me via direct messenger. I appreciate you reaching out. We just haven't had the opportunity to connect. Uh, but but uh, hey, guys, here, here's where I'm at. Okay, and then hopefully you can you can uh, maybe answer a question for me to 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 where I should what what uh, I should do at this point. Okay, so Gator as of June 22nd, sub two July 11th. I became an affiliate PML shortly after that. So I'm doing some lending on my right hand. And now I, I actually made the investment into Astro Blaster when I first came aboard to Gator. I just got ATP approved and I'm ready to launch on that side. So I'm really excited. I'm really nervous. Uh, I need help. 
<laughs> Tell me what my next step should be. What do you What are you nervous about? Well, uh, like for one, the my, my launching because I, I definitely I know I for one I need a VA because now I'm juggling two businesses per se, uh, and trying to build some capital on my right uh, to invest on my left. Uh, so I just want to know should I should I be looking at JVN with with my Astro Blaster? Uh, to with with some gators to help me to to help me get off the ground so to speak and while building my capital on my right i just wanted to find a smart way to connect with the, the right people to help my business grow let, let me ask you if this was a year in advance let's let's reverse engineer this uh we're talking october 2025 what have you accomplished in your business that's point z what have you what have you accomplished you're, well, you threw me out there. We're hypothetically speaking a year from now. What have yeah, I What I'm doing is I'm working backwards so you can start to determine what you need today. Understand where you want to be in a year, whether that's you want to have closed 20 uh, loans yeah. or whatever it is. Come up with where you want to be in a year and then work backwards to what you need to do tomorrow. I completely understand that. Uh Appreciate you might not have the answer right now, but and we can talk offline, but determine what point Z is. Point Z is you may yeah. want to have X number of deals, however you define what a deal is, whether it's a loan, a fix and flip, whatever yeah. it is. Uh, so the point right before that is how do you find them? How do you underwrite them? So start from that perspective. Where do you want to be in a year? And then work back to point A of what are you doing tomorrow? Okay, which, which makes complete sense, and I appreciate that. I guess my point is right now, uh, being, let's say, uh, I mentioned that I'm an affiliate PML, so I'm, I'm going to be starting to, to receive compensation on that end, okay? So now my point is, you know what, why should I be using my own capital? Now, I, I want to learn how to raise capital so I'll use other people's money. Uh, I believe I have the ability. I, I believe I have a platform. I believe I have a voice to do it. So I just need to know how do I get associated with the right individuals to do this, I don't know. I, I guess I would say um, just, you know, go to meetups and network with people, um, see who you can collaborate with um, to kind of help you, whether it's capital raising or on the Astro Blaster side, um, on the investing side. Because um, yeah. like JJ said earlier, you know, you can't do this by yourself. You know, you need to build a team, you know, build some partnerships. Oh, yes. um, so it doesn't have to be internal partner. It can be yeah. an external partner. You can have external people that you're working with. Um, somebody could bring value to you in some shape or form. Um, and keep in mind that, you know, money is not the only currency that we have. You know, we have right. time, we have uh, relationships, uh, we have skill set, right? So, um, yeah. so just use those four currencies to kind of exchange with other people, um, and just build, a, build those relationships. Um, yeah, yeah no, tomorrow. I, you can come to the meetup tomorrow, you can, you know, possibly find that partner. Um, and you know what? I, I'm I the only thing that I'm really leaving out is and I haven't shared with you that I'm in a position right now where I'm I'm recovering physically, uh, my health. So with, with that said, you know, I'll probably I'm projecting you know, I'll probably be out and about maybe within a month. Uh, and this has been a long struggle for me. You know, I'm talking five years coming back. So I, I understand the importance of the meetups, but I'm kind of like at a at a at a, at a pivotal point where I see success. Right now, I just want to know how to pivot to kind of kickstart it. In my in my personal situation, being I can't go to a meeting. Think about what you were going to do at a meeting. How can you do that online? If it's network yeah. with people again, once you reverse engineer what you want to do and you understand what your skills are and the gifts you have, start advertising that in the in the groups and start to connect with others and partner up that way. Okay, no, that that's uh, definite. You know, I, I really wanted to. Uh, raise my hand, ask a question. You and I have talked, Mitch. We need to reconnect. We are going to reconnect. And Richard, you and I, please, I would love to to, to grab some time with you. Feel free to go to creativeasteries.com. Our contact info is there. Uh, feel free to set up a meeting with us, and we're happy to connect with you. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Crystal, you are on with uh, Richard Knowles and Mitch Roy. What's your question? Hey, hello, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm a connector also in the community, and I'm kind of similar to Rob. I have some medical issues that I can't get to meetups as much as I want it to. 
but uh, I still push forward. I uh, need to definitely put more presence on the social media part of it. I'm so not used to doing being in front of that camera, I guess you could say. <laughs> uh, beyond that, uh, I definitely need to dive in more into the underwriting so I can understand what's the deal, what's not the deal. Just like people said in the past, you know, what looks good to you may not look good to me. So uh, just like you said, Mike, earlier, uh, that, um, you know, I don't look at the exits. I just want to know what's the, what the ground rules are. What is my best price or best, you know, for the deal? And that's the things I want to learn, too. I'm really a uh, fast learner. I see things in my head. I'm analytical, just like you just said. So I just need more guidance. I have a big idea that I think that's what I want to do and invest in, but I need to hone it in and get it to a good point. I don't want to just be everywhere. That's the challenge with this business, especially if you have ADD. Everything's a shiny object and it's fun mm -hmm. and it's very easy. Like, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. And it's a challenge to focus on one thing that you and love. But once you do that, things start to fall in place. And it uh, encourages you to partner and work with other individuals uh, where you either might not be interested or that's not your strength. And, and no one other than maybe Pace Morby is really good at every single thing. You want to find out what your really, what is, you know, your, your, I gave you five different areas. Find out what you really love doing and you're best at and focus on that. Whether that's underwriting, whether that's closing, whether it's lead generation, whether it's dispo, whether it's fixing and flipping, whatever it is, find out what you love and are naturally good at and will and improve at and be really good at that. And then find people who are strong where maybe you're not interested or not as good. And that's how you build that bond of relationships. Absolutely. And that's the thing right now. I don't know exactly what area I want to go into. I I have a construction background, meaning that I work with friends and family on projects. So I can see where people can approve in certain areas and certain jobs and things like that with the flips and such. But my biggest thing is gab. I'm good at talking with people. I'm good at making people laugh and, and getting to know people on a personable level. That is my my biggest characteristic. Um, I love making people happy, you know, even if it's just giving you a smile. You know, I may not be able to help you any other way, but I'll, you know, try to put a smile on your face. Uh, that's my love biggest it. gift. But beyond that, I'm not sure what angle. That's why I'm still working through. That's why I was thinking if I can underwrite, underwrite's always a good, good uh, tool to have, period. It doesn't matter what part of the business you're in. So I figured I would start there. Mitch, Richard, can, can I jump in, guys, on that on uh, Crystal's question here? Please, brother. Um, from the underwriting standpoint, there's been a name mentioned a couple times in the chat. Uh, as one of the best looking guys in Sub Two, his name's Mr. Jason Park, and he is the underwriting master. And um, you'll have to see what his availability is. I think he might have a Zoom once in a while. He might have different types of trainings availability he may or may not but he's a great guy to reach out to with some preliminary questions i don't know what his availability is um but you know e e even richard put that you know jason park is the man and so he will be someone you want to reach out to if, if you have any trouble connecting with him crystal i can connect you to him but i'm going to also tell you or anyone watching on youtube down the line I am not telling you that he has a class, he has a training, he's available 24. No, this guy's busy. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he's busy, busy, busy. But, uh, you know, by knowing Mitch, Richard, myself, uh, we can make an introduction. And then after that, it's just a matter of seeing what his availability might be. Because, again, this man's busy. Um, as far as being a, a, a connector, Crystal, when I, when I started investment education six years ago, I had no idea where I was going to go. Yeah. Right. Somebody asked me, what are you good at? And I said, you know, I don't know what I'm good at. You know, I said, what do you like to do? I said, I like to throw parties. You know, I've, I've been at, I've been had a couple of picnics here in Southern California of 250 yeah. investors. I take uh, investors to Dodger games, uh, Charger games, Ram games, etc. I forced Richard Knowles to go to a Philadelphia Eagles game with me. <laughs> I had to drag him in there kicking and screaming. Um <laughs> 
<laughs> but let's 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 you and I connect because what I I really teach is not just networking, but it's basically a combination of business communications, interpersonal relations, in regard to social media, and real estate investment, mm -hmm. and having a strategy on how to post, how to comment, how to engage, how to message someone, how to generate conversation. And again, networking with intent, having a game plan, knowing how to work the room at a live meetup, knowing how to use your smartphone as a business tool, knowing the different security settings that you're going to implement on Facebook that as you're networking and as you're connecting people, you can help people learn how to use Facebook as a business tool. And I will give you everything I know for no charge and asking you for the most valuable thing you have as a real estate investor. What is that, Crystal? Time. Um, no. More valuable than your time. Oh. Okay. It's your friendship. Oh, okay. You want to surround yourself with successful investors. They're yeah. all busy. I guarantee you, Jason Park, Mitch Roy, Richard Knowles, these guys are busy. They can only help so many people. But if your strategy of networking and connecting people is to build the relationship, not chase the deal, the key to surrounding yourself with successful people is to become their friend, legitimately. The yes. best business relationship is a personal friendship. Absolutely. That's, why, that's why, you know, I've asked Mitch and Richard literally for nothing in the time I've known them other than come to my picnic, come to my party, come to a game, let's hang out, let's become friends. And I've been consistent and genuine in building the relationship. So let's you and I talk later offline. Let me help you. Maybe I should go create a connector school. I don't know. But, uh, Let's connect later, you and myself, and I'll give you everything I can do to help you get you going in your path. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you for joining us. Mitch, Richard, we took a number of questions. You guys brought great value. Uh, I know we could go on for hours because real estate, you know, underwriting, creative finance is nothing we're going to cover in an hour. You know, so it's always going to continue. Uh, I really want to thank you guys for coming on today. I've got two last questions for you. One for each of you, and again, probably the second question for each of you. If people are on the call now and they want to connect with you later, they didn't want to ask a question on the call, or people are watching on YouTube weeks and months down the line, Mitch, what's the best way for people to connect with you? What's the best way for people to reach you? Either on Facebook Messenger or Richard put our Creative Vesters link. Either way, send a message who you are, what you need. Uh, either to our Creative Investors website or to us on Facebook Messenger. Those are the places we're at the most, and then we can go from there. So, Richard, if people want to connect with you weeks and months down the line, what's the best way to reach out to you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is Richard Knowles. Facebook's right there, Richard uh, Knowles. Find me on Facebook. Uh, send me a message. I'm happy to connect with you. And then, of course, you guys also have a website that we mentioned, Creative Investors. Awesome. Oh, and again, for the people that are watching on YouTube weeks and months down the line, you're not limited to just help sub two people. You'll, you'll help any, any new investor from anywhere in the country that might need help. If they need help with a deal, they can bring it to you. You help them help them work that, take it to the finish line. Of course, you know, obviously you guys are going to get compensated for your time when you're helping someone close a deal they can't close on their own because otherwise there wouldn't be a deal. But um, you guys have helped so many people. I, I, I can't tell you how many people have come to me and, and just been so very thankful of everything that you guys do for the community. Uh, you guys run the SoCal uh, Creative Finance Group. You host a monthly meetup at the, at the Mondrian Hotel in West Hollywood. And, you know, you, you, you guys are leaders. You guys are go-givers. And, um, and I'm honored to call you guys my friends. Last question for you guys. And we've touched on this throughout the call. I've got a networking group, and there's so many education groups out there. There's over 50 that I know of, not 150. Each education group has a Facebook page or group for their community of students. And each community has brand new students as well as experienced students coming every single day to join and learn about creative finance or if it's astral flipping or learning about wholesaling. But as we're coming to learn the education, a lot of them are coming to the first time to learn how to use social media to assist in their business. Not always knowing how important that is. 
How important is it to use social media, whether it be Facebook or Instagram, and predominantly Facebook? Facebook has networking groups, Instagram does not. But how important is it to use social media for the new investor or the experienced investor to grow and build their business? Very, 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 very important. Um, you have to brand yourself, right? Um, just like um, JJ said earlier, it's not always who you know, but who knows you, right? So how are they going to find you if you're not, you know, visible on social media, on the network, right? So it's very, very important to let people know what you're doing. Somebody mentioned trying to raise money uh, for deals earlier. Um, if they don't know who you are, why should they lend money to you? Right. So if you're posting yourself on social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, um, X, Twitter, whatever, maybe Snapchat, doesn't matter. TikTok, um, doesn't matter. Just put yourself out there and essentially clone yourself in a sense, right? Because that content will be there forever. Right. Um, you cannot, you know, be live every single day on Zooms all day long. Right. That would be too time consuming. But if you're creating videos and you're posting on social media, it's going to be there forever. So people can find you very easily and see what kind of deals you're doing, what you're about, and who knows, you might build a partnership from social media. Okay? So I would say it's extremely, extremely important and valuable. There you go. I mean, you guys have been fantastic today. I can't thank you enough. And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as I said many times, I sincerely appreciate your friendship because there's nothing more valuable. You know, I ask investors all the time, I want the most valuable thing you have as a real estate investor. What is that? And people want to say their time or their network or their knowledge. But in actuality, if you guys are watching right now on YouTube or even on the call, the most valuable thing you have to offer as a real estate investor is your friendship. Yeah. Because people okay. help and work with those that they like, know, and lo know like, and trust. I thought trust out the one. If I don't like him, I can trust you. So people work with and help people they know and like, and they cannot like if they do not know you. But the key is to build relationships. Don't chase the deal. Chase relationship. You build relationships by building a friendship. That's the best business relationship you can get. Again, guys, I thank you so much. Um, if you guys are watching on YouTube right now, please like Richard and Mitch's video. Please like the YouTube video. Uh, please put in the comment section what your takeaways were what you like, what you didn't like, how I can improve my product for you, my YouTube podcast. Uh, again, you, you can find the guys on Facebook and on Instagram and just reel back, rewind a little bit in the YouTube video here, and they'll be telling you, we'll show you what, what their links are. If you want to connect with me, you want to join my group, just scan the QR code here. It takes you to the website for my group, jjazizen.com. Click the little registration button. Here's my Instagram uh link right here, my, my Instagram handle, and of course, the uh, my jjzzoom.com is a website, the same one that takes you to the QR code. Uh, if you guys are on the call right now, don't disappear. We're going to go to breakout rooms and actually maybe have a couple of questions from Mitch and Richard before they, they take off. And guys, Richard, Mitch, um, thank you so much for joining us. As far as everyone watching on YouTube and, and on the call today, we'll see everybody else in the future on, on uh the world of virtual uh, networking with Instagram and Facebook, right? Oh, and another one. You guys have an awesome group for Southern California. Again, that's SoCal Creative Finance. It's a Facebook group. And uh, Richard, you, you host an event actually tomorrow night. And um, we're going to we're gonna show the flyer for that to the group after the call because by the time the video comes up, the, the event will be over. But really quick, Richard, for people that are watching now on YouTube and in Southern California, tell us a little bit about your monthly event at the Mondrian Hotel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we have a monthly event every second Thursday at the Mondrian Los Angeles Hotel in West Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard. Beautiful, beautiful hotel. There's a pool, there's nice views, um, there's a bar. It's a beautiful venue. The vibes are amazing. Um, so typically we have a speaker or some sort of a panel and uh, we do a lot of networking. That's the best value that you get out of these meetups is networking. Um, so I encourage you guys to come out, you know, every second Thursday around 6.30 p.m. Uh, we kind of go until maybe 9.30, 10-ish. Um, and uh, it's a beautiful venue. So please come by and check us out. You know? And uh, our meetup uh, website is socaljvmeetup.com. So you can join to be a member and you get alerted every time we have meetups coming up. And message Mitch, Richard, and myself will direct you to their group. Uh, if you're in 
the state of California, anywhere in the country you want to JV with people in Southern California, we'll connect you to Mitch and Richard's team. All right, guys, hang on. We're going to go to a little chat after the call. Everybody else, we'll see you guys in the world of social networking. Over now. out.